sprites are the superheroes of game programming. We already looked at labels, which show text on the screen, but if games only had text in them, they wouldn't be as engaging, would they? So, let's talk about sprites. Now, by the way, what are sprites? Where did the name sprite come from? And no, we don't mean the soda. Sprites, um, where did they come from? Well, I'll tell you. Sprites originally came from older English and from fairies. So back in the day, a long time ago, uh, sprites, the word sprite was used to refer to a fairy. And they are called sprites in games because they fly around the screen like fairies do. So let's try to summon a sprite here and uh, with some code. This is going to be a little different from labels that we discussed earlier um, because with a sprite you need an image and that complicates things. With text you can just say, okay, give me a text area, we'll throw some text in there, bang, no problem. But with sprites, we have to have an image. So the way EnchantJS works is you have to preload your images. That is why the game object has a preload method that is called here before we write the onload function that actually contains our main game. So here we're saying game.preload caro1.png and what that does is it puts it into sort of like the resource bucket that EnchantJS has access to when it is running its stuff. So we preload caro1.png and then we say new sprite and I'm going to talk about this 32 and 32 a little bit later but and then we say bear.image equals caro1 Basically, we're, we're calling game.assets, so we're accessing sort of that bucket that we filled up with game.preload. And then um, we are adding it to the root scene, which, like we saw in the label example earlier, makes it visible. So, the other thing we can do is we can add event listeners. Event listeners are very, very common in games in EnchantJS. So with the example that we saw earlier with the label of this.x plus equals 1, moving it across the screen there, we can do the same thing here with our sprite. This is the exact same event listener, and it's actually the exact same code with uh, the exception of the reference here of bear. So bear.addEventListener and our frame function in this.x plus equals 1. So we're just moving it across the screen like we did before. So, bears. Let's talk about this constructor that we're using to create this bear. So we saw constructors with the label object before in our, our last video. But with this one, um, it's pretty similar. We have a name of an object, you know, and we have sprite because we're saying create bear as an instance of the sprite class. And we're using new, we're invoking our constructor. But we have these two arguments. Before, when we created a label, we would say this blank equals new label, and then we passed a single argument, a string, specifying what we wanted as the text of that label. But in sprites, the sprite class, when we create a new object, we need two arguments. And these arguments are specifically the dimensions. So the first argument is the dimension in the x axis, and the other one is the dimension in the y axis, so width by height. So we're saying create a new sprite that is 32 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall. That's what it is. Ta -da. Now we, we, so basically we're passing the dimensions of the sprite when it is created. Alright, so properties of sprites. We talked about properties of labels before, but with sprites we have a few more properties than with labels. We have x, we have y, um, we have frame, which we'll talk about. We have age, which is on, on most objects actually. Age indicates the number of frames that the object has been part of the scene. So when you add it to a scene and it becomes visible, then age starts triggering. Like, how long has it been alive? And it is represented by a number of frames, like I said. So if we had frames per second set to 30, after one second, age would be equal to 30. And it would keep going on from there. Scale X and scale Y are just, essentially, percentage-based scale ratios. So by default, they're equal to 1. If you say scale X equals 2, then it will double how wide the sprite is. 
So mess around with some of these properties and see what happens. Um, but let's talk about the frame property next, because that is probably the single-handedly most important property of the Sprite class. So with sprites, we have this sheet here. When you load an image for a sprite, you're not going to have just a single image, because what if your sprite needs to be able to turn left or turn right or go up or go down? That is going to be represented by a different image. So what we want to do is we want to bring all of these images together into a single image file that we call a sprite sheet. And the sprite sheet is very important because you can consolidate all of your frames for a single character into one file and manage it much more efficiently. So we need something to designate which frame we're referencing. So obviously we, we create our sprite and we say we wanted to use this image file. We say carol1.png, use this image file. But what what is EnchantJS going to do when there are so many bears? How is it going to know which bear we want? Well, by default it will always take the one in the top left corner. And that is actually frame zero. The way these are numbered are from top to left, going from left to right, and it starts with zero. If you um, are familiar with arrays, the way arrays are counted in programming languages, they always start with zero, and this is essentially an array of images in, in our terms of thinking. So it starts with frame zero, frame one, frame two, frame three, and so on, and so on. So the frame numbering is from the top left, and yeah. So if we create this spread, we don't designate a frame number. It will always take the one in the top left hand corner, frame zero. So we have your standard bear. Standard bear, just brown bear, just chilling out, right there. At any time, we could say bear dot frame equals, we could say three, bear dot frame equals three, and then he would be a crying bear, or bear dot frame equals five, and it's a white bear, or bear dot frame equals ten, and then you have a lady bear. That's all you have to do to change which frame you're referencing on this sprite sheet. So that's all you gotta do. So how could you create an event listener that utilizes this? Well, let's look at some code. So here we have a game, and we've preloaded our carol1.png, as you can see. Inside here, we're creating a new sprite, bear equals new sprite, 32 by 32, and those are the dimensions, like we said before. Then, since we've already preloaded it, we can bring in the image. We can say bear.image. We can designate which sprite sheet we want EnchantJS to use for this object as game.assets, carol1.png. So we preloaded it into our bucket that EnchantJS uses, and then we use game.assets to access files in that, that bucket, you can say. And then we're adding an event listener. Now, what is this? What is this doing right here? We haven't even specify where it's supposed to be, what's going on, it's so confusing, right? No, 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 it's not. By default, all sprites are going to be put in position 0, 0. So by default, since we're not saying bear.x equals this or bear.y equals that, it will always be bear.x equals 0, bear.y equals 0, if you don't specify it. So if we have a screen here, and we have a bear, we're creating it, but we don't specify an x value or a y value, it'll always be in the top left-hand corner, right here. So if you go to screen, it's right here. So that's, that's where it's going to be in the top left-hand corner of the screen. All right, let's get back to this event listener here. So we have this event listener, bear.addEventListener, touch end. Well, what do we know about this? Well, based on the last lecture, touch end occurs, it's an event that occurs when a user clicks and lets go of something. So here we know that this code will be executed if a user clicks and lets go of the bear. So he clicks and lets go of the bear on the screen. This code will get executed. So here, we say this dot frame equals three. Well, we don't have a this dot frame beforehand, so what is it going to be normally? Like I said before, default value of frame is zero, that top left-hand corner, that standard bear. Normal chilling brown bear, he's just chilling. So we have chilling brown bear, and he's there. And then we have this event listener that says, if someone clicks and lets go of the bear, this dot frame should equal three. So it should change from this dot frame zero to this dot frame equals three. Well, what will that do? Based on our last slide, we saw that the third bear, like bear with a frame number of three, was the crying bear. So here, 
this code is saying create a bear and have it just be the brown bear just hanging out there doing nothing. And if someone clicks on it, switch the frame over to the crying bear. So essentially, the user will click on the bear and then the bear changes to a picture of a crying bear. So that's all it does. Simple, simple. And then this last part right here is game.rootscene.addChildBear, which is necessary to make it visible because we're adding it to that root scene. So that is essentially how sprites work. So go ahead and fire this up in code.9late.net sometime, and you can see how sprites work yourself. Congratulations, you are an official Enchant.js beginner. Thanks.